Well, um, there's a lot, that, you know, what you've seen historically with the industry was a lot of kind of plain vanilla market cap weighted indexes uh, coming through as ETFs. You know, right now you're seeing a lot of traditional actively uh, active managers trying to figure out either how do I uh, deliver my investment program in an ETF or how do I, how can I kind of repurpose what I'm doing into an index and, and, and launch essentially kind of a quasi-active fund in, in, in a passive wrapper. Uh, a lot of the business development and product development efforts that I'm seeing right now are more around active and, and kind of alternatively weighted uh, indexes. And this is a way to get sort of to do active in a passive environment. That's right. And, and the main the main reason that you're seeing that is it, it's um, there's a couple of different paths that you have to go go down through as far as legal uh, legal work to be able to launch an ETF. And there's one track for passive, and there's a, a separate track for active. In fact, if you want to do both, it's still a separate track with two different divisions with the SEC that you have to go through. And so. Um, what you, you know, what essentially what's happened is the, the passive side has kind of become easier and quicker and sometimes cheaper. And so some of the active guys who want to, you know, if their strategy can come out in passive form, they'll, they'll do it because of that. And what, so for an advisor and their in, in investors, what, does it make any difference? What, if these are coming, what should they be aware of or what's important to them about these developments? Yeah, I, I think, you know, from, um, and if I kind of, you know, put myself in the advisor's shoes and uh, I look at all these new products coming out, I mean, the first thing I think you have to remember is, you know, an ETF is just a vehicle that delivers an investment program. Um, and so the first thing I think you, got, you have to think about is, is the investment program right for me or my client? I mean, that's kind of the first thing. Does this, is this what I'm looking for? You know, if it is, then I think the next thing you ask is the ETF the best vehicle to uh, have this investment program delivered to me. And so, in other words, if I could uh, if I could hire this manager to run a separate account, maybe to have a mutual fund, it's a hedge fund, a bank collective trust fund, all these different vehicles that can deliver that program, is the ETF the right one for me? And you know, if if I think it is, then at that point, I think you dive in. And you start to look at some of the things that, that make a good ETF a good ETF. I mean, you want to see certainly some level of assets in the fund that show that the fund can be sustainable. That's you know, usually in the kind of 50 to $100 million range. Uh, you want to see some trading volume that suggests there's enough interest there, enough liquidity to support my buying and selling. And I don't want to be you know, too, too big a chunk of that um, over the course of a day. Um, and then, you know, some, some other elements of, of the trading side, just in terms of are the spreads reasonable, does the pricing seem efficient? You know, un unfortunately, one of, the, um, one of the things that you get with ETFs is not just do I want to invest in it, but then how do I actually implement that idea? Uh, and, and really what I mean by that is, is how should I trade this? How do I buy it? How do I sell it? And how do I do it in a way that... You know, even if it doesn't add any value, at least I'm not losing value through that process. And um, that kind of speaks to the exchange traded part of the exchange traded fund, uh, which is re a really important piece, you know, for, for advisors to, to keep in mind.